I'm in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, New York. Right behind me, beyond this fountain, are people who've come to protest genetic engineering. They don't understand how the FDA has been leading a campaign to convince the American public and the State Department that around the world that genetic engineering is safe, it's, uh, it's what will help feed the world's hungry, and organic is not important, but genetic engineering is. Well, there's a lot of people who take issue with that, including Dr. Jeffrey Smith, Professor Vandana Shiva, many people you're going to hear from. The march begins here. There are 16 stops with small gatherings. We're going to take it all the way that 316 miles over 16 days to Washington, D.C. and take that message to Congress that organic, small-scale, sustainable, local crops are the future. Every study shows that genetic engineering has never been proven safe and that organic is actually better on all levels, protecting the soil, biodiversity. So let's see what they have to say. They have music, they have speakers, and I'm not here to speak, I'm here to document and bring the message of those who have an important issue to inform Americans on this way. Hi, what's your name? Vivian. Hi, Vivian. We're here in Prospect Park. Uh, there are speakers in the background here. Why are you here? I'm here because I'm a firm believer in our right to know what is in our food. And as a consumer, as a mother, as an American, I think it's imperative that these marchers have my support and the support of everyone. Where did you come from? I came from Long Island. How far out Long Island? Huntington area. Well, that's a, quite a trip. Well, good. So you believe that people have a right to eat genetically engineered food, but if they don't want to, they should know that it is genetic and so they don't buy it. Well, yes, as a consumer, if I go into the grocery store and I am presented with information about the product and if it has genetically modified um, effects, I will not buy it. All right, you won't buy any genetic? No. Good. Well, let's go hear what the speakers have to say. Next, we got a little treat for you. It's called the Conscious Carnival Ballyhoo. It's part of the Sustainable Living Roadshow, and we believe in activism in all forms, in the arts, in education, and entertainment. So up next, we got a little hip-hop show for you, a little rhyme, and something to educate you and entertain you. Next up, the, the Ballyhoo Carnival Crew. Let's hear it, folks. Well, there's a new freak in town, but you may have not heard, because they don't need to tell us. They don't give us their word. They are GMOs with a freaky science vision. They are genetically, genetically modified, modified organisms. organisms. Combining plants, animals, and viruses together to create something new. But I have to ask y'all whether or not these new things are put through a test. test. All their scientists tell us is that they are best. Oh, but if they are so safe, then why don't they label the products in stores that wind up on our table? And why are they not allowed in most other countries? It seems they are testing on us without, without any scrutiny. GMs, GMO seeds are sterile and won't grow. They, they can't. Plant. They force farmers to purchase next year's to plant. But nature has provided seeds to give life, to create next year's crop without any such strife. Oh, but the GMO companies won't have it. Uh -uh. You must purchase the seeds so that they build up their profits. GMOs are no good. They're just Franken food. Not good for anything from crops, plants, or wood. They should stop messing with nature and just keep things organic. Stop tampering with the earth and causing such panic. Cause nature is known for thousands of years and we don't want a future filled with tears. For what was created 
A freak, freak show, show of, of greed. greed. These are things that nobody needs. Oh, we should start with a label because we have a right, right to, to know. know. So we can make choices to avoid GMOs. GMOs. Then everyone can know the truth about Monsanto. And our dollar can say no to this GMO freak show. We got a right to know. We got a right to know. We got a right to label these GMOs. You have a right to know. You got a right to know. You got a right to label these GMOs. Give it up, give it up. Yeah. We figured with Obama that we had some of our allies uh, in the USDA to help us out and help uh, finally, uh, you know, stop this tidal wave of GMOs coming into the country. And unfortunately, about eight months ago, the genetically engineered alfalfa, which is engineered to be herbicide tolerant. So this is a, a Monsanto's weed killer, Roundup Ready. So what Monsanto does is they, and, and just to back up, Basically, the, the pesticide industry has bought the seed industry in this country. And the pesticide industry, led by companies like Monsanto, are engineering in resistance to their weed killer so they can sell more weed killer. And this is a problem because not only are you dumping more weed killer in the environment, you're also putting this intense selection pressure on weeds and creating super weeds that are evolved resistance to this weed killer, which means that you need to put even more weed killer on. So it's this chemical treadmill we're on and it's just a disaster. And this genetics, they, they spread into the non-GMO alfalfa or non-GMO variants. Um, anyway, so you know, we figured we had Organic Valley, we had some of our most powerful companies in there, in the USDA, trying to like, you know, at least get like buffer zones established, have the government say, okay, if you grow GMO alfalfa, there has to be a buffer zone. And if you contaminate a farmer, there has to be compensation for that farmer who through no fault of their own is growing organic and they get a contaminated GMO and have to dump their organic into a conventional market. There has to be some kind of compensation for that farmer. Well, we didn't get any of that. Basically, the USDA just gave a, a blank gift, just gave a gift to the biotech, a blanket deregulation of alfalfa. And it was just a body blow to organic. And what we realized is that we have no inside game. There is no inside game in Washington. Uh, it, Obama's USDA is owned uh, by the biotech just as much as every previous administration. And if we don't do anything, like within a decade, every single major crop with any significant market size is gonna be genetically modified, and we're not gonna know it. Like, you know, like genetically engineered salmon's on its way, um, you know, pig, every single meat, every single vegetable is gonna be genetically engineered, and you're not gonna know it. And it's engineered with a compound to make, to resist weed killer. It's engineered to have insecticide in every single cell of the plant. And we're feeding this to our population, to our kids, we don't know what's going to happen, well, let's just see what happens in 10 and 20 years if we're eating insecticide in our food, well, what might happen? Well, we don't, you know, we have no right, we have no way of opting out of this experiment. So in Europe and in Japan and in 40 other developed nations, they have the right to know and they have to label if it's genetically engineered, right? And, and where, there, where there's labeling, there's rejection. Right? As soon as you give a choice, an informed choice to consumers, they'll say, well, gosh, maybe I don't want that genetically engineered tofu. I'll have the not genetically engineered tofu. And they reject it. Right? And so biotech knows that. So th but this is why we need labeling. You know, again, and, and, and we're a broad coalition. You know, if you like GMOs, you think they're great, okay, label it. You know, just be proud of it. Buy it, label it. And, you know, but we have a right not to buy it. So, you know, that's our issue. And we're taking that to Washington. You know, we got to bring outside pressure. We gotta bring a wake-up call to FDA and yeah, make our voices heard. We got California, we got ballot initiatives around the country emerging to give the right to labeling. So I, you know, I think we're in a real moment. I think this this March, you know, it's energizing. I think people are waking up. We're gonna communicate. It's a real easy message, you know, especially even your like hardcore, you know, right-wing Republicans, you know, they, they wanna know what's in their meat. You say, God damn it, you know, I have a right to know what's that my genetic my beef, my fish has been genetically engineered. You know, I mean, we have allies everywhere. So, you know, all right, we can do this. Boom. All right. And one of the things that I focus on, there's a lot of people that will say we're part of a human experiment. There's a lot of people that will say we don't know what the science is. We do know. Every single day, I see patients in my office. I see patients in Los Angeles. I see patients in New York. I do phone consults with people around the country. And they have diseases that they should not have. 
I had a 30-year-old healthy woman come into my office this week, and she said six, up until six months ago, I was the picture of health. Now every day when I put something in my mouth, I break out into hives. I don't know what it is. I break out into hives from anything that I eat. And we have had to slowly take away from this person everything that she eats. Why? Because she is getting something into her body that her body rejects. Well, the body is very, very smart. The body is very, very simple. It understands food. It doesn't understand chemicals. It doesn't understand the pesticides that are routinely, every week we open up a journal, every week we see in the news that there are more and more pesticides that are being proven to be damaging to our body. When we understand what a genetically modified organism is, that is a corn or a soy or any of the other uh, genetically modified foods, that those pesticides have been spliced into the genes. When we look at diseases like cancer, when we look at autoimmune diseases where the body is attacking itself, and we say, gee, what, are, what could be causing this? What's causing this is that the body is not getting things that it recognizes. The body is overwhelmed. I wrote the book Mom Energy not because the only people that I want to focus on are moms, but I want to point to every single mom here, and I hope that any non-mom here takes it to another mom and says, you have the power. Right now, moms have the power to make the change in this country. You buy the products, you buy the, the food that we eat, and hear me loud, you buy the dietary supplements. If you are buying supplements that are not non-GMO verified, look for the non-GMO project label. If you are buying those supplements and giving your kids every single day those vitamins or taking them yourselves, you are putting an experiment into your body every day. If you are putting it on your skin, if you're not using things like Dr. Bronner's wash and you're using other soaps, you are part of an experiment because what goes on our skin goes into our bodies. Moms, you are the purchasers. And as somebody who worked in advertising before I became a dietitian, I can also tell you, you are the ones that the companies are listening to. What you buy, they will make. What you don't buy, they won't make. And all we're asking for is a label there. Thank you, Jeffrey. I was just speaking with Jeffrey a few moments ago, and I said, you know, Jeffrey, how many individuals in the United States for at least 20 to 30 years have been leading movements to protect the consumer and rarely get acknowledged? Jeffrey's one of those individuals. You're here today because he has been consistent, and others, Mr. Hansen, consistent in their dedication to this. Let's hear it for their dedication. How many people are here from BAI, WBAI, let me see hands, lots of people. By the way, from California, from Berkeley, came in here to see this and to promote this on Pacifica as the head of Pacifica, Arlene Englehart and the head of Pacifica Board, Summers, they're gonna see this gets on all five Pacifica stations. Because Pacifica is helping lead the public awareness of these major campaigns. Now, I'm going, I have to go off to the west side because I'm helping Heldon Caldecott and Carl Grossman today close down Indian Point. And all of us are concerned. Genetic engineering, Indian Point, they're all connected because who's behind them? The same politicians that support the FDA and the USDA and Obama and selecting only, only pro-GM uh, genetically modified uh, people like Michael from uh, Manceno, Michael Taylor. Never, never does any administration select someone who's against GMOs or against nuclear power. It's always selecting someone inside the power base. Well, now we're going to be getting that message out. So I left some uh, my newest documentary, Knocking on the Devil's Door, Our Deadly Nuclear Legacy, over there free as a gift to you. I support this. I'll be joining you through their whole march, ending up in Washington. We want to challenge the FDA, because remember, it's the FDA and the USDA who helped lead the charge for these new food safety bills. There's nothing in those bills to protect you. It's there to protect the genetic engineering industry. And unfortunately, if we don't stop this, you won't see organic farmers. Their laws in the bills currently are so strict, so 
so arbitrary that if you are a small organic farmer, you can't meet their requirements for safety. As a result, you'll go out of business. So it's all interconnected. I thank you all for being here. Great job you're all doing. All right, folks, let's hear it for the Conscious Carnival Ballyhoo crew. Next up, we got an excellent speaker, an excellent human, Michael Hansen, a senior scientist at the Consumers Union. Wants to tell us a little bit about the work that he's been doing, and uh, here he is, folks. Let's hear from Michael. Uh, howdy. First thing I'd like to do is apologize for the way I'm dressed. Part of the reason for this is last... What? Closer? Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to apologize for the way I'm dressed. The reason I'm in this sort of monkey suit is I was uh, in Columbia, um, M Missouri last night doing a debate on GMOs with uh, Martina McLaughlin, who she runs the, uh, the program in California on genetic engineering. And so I, I had to get on a 6 a.m. Uh, flight to come back here. But what I'd like to say is we've been working on, through Consumers Union, we've been working on this GMO issue for over 25 years. Why should you care? This is a, a radically new technology. It's completely different than conventional breeding. Um, <clears throat> the, the way that engineered crops are different than conventional is basically with conventional breeding, think of it as you can cross, you can cross things. It's sort of like shuffling cards in a deck. With uh, genetic engineering, they take these little genes and they literally shoot them into plants. You have no control over where it goes in the plant and it, and it can cause all sorts of uh, problems. That's why there's actually been a global agreement. The UN uh, Food Safety Standards Setting Organization that's jointly run by the World Health Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization, that's called Codex Alimentarius. They have actually, there was an eight-year process where all the countries in the world came together and talked about uh, whether there should be safety assessments for genetically engineered crops, uh, genetically engineered animals, and genetically engineered microorganisms. We actually, Consumers Union is part of a global network of consumer organizations. We've got 250 member organizations in 110 countries. We went to all these meetings over eight years and there's now global uh, uh, agreement that there should be required safety testing for these crops before they come on the market. And you know what? The U.S. does not require that. In fact, our policy on genetically engineered foods was announced in May of 1992 at a biotechnology industry organization uh, meeting by then Vice President Dan Quayle as a deregulatory initiative. So we've been asking that there needs to be both safety testing and labeling. In fact, on, on the labeling front, there's been an 18-year fight uh, again at this UN Food Safety Organization at, at uh, Codex. And the reason that's important is because what comes out of Codex is actually written into the World Trade Organization. So that means there's been global ag agreement that there should be required safety testing and we were able to get language through that will allow countries to label. There's more than 40, between 40 and 50 countries in the world that require labeling right now. And uh, India actually will soon require labeling as will Malaysia and a number of other uh, countries. And we've now gotten agreement that uh, these countries can label and not have to worry about a, a WTO challenge from the uh, US. So this 18 year struggle, the US and their allies got defeated. Finally, Two more things. You should know that they talk about GMOs, they're going to help feed the world and reduce pesticide use, but that's not true. Uh, soybeans are the most engineered crop in the world. Over 93% of the U.S. acreage is uh, engineered, 98% in Argentina, almost 90% in Brazil. Indeed, globally, about 50% of all the soybeans are engineered. It's all to reduce herbicides. And in fact, if you look at the data clearly, soybeans that are engineered have lower yields than the non-engineered soybeans. Farmers use them because it simplifies herbicide decisions. So these crops don't have lower yields. In terms of reducing pesticide use, that's not true either. There's actually been a study, and in the first 15 years of, or the first 13 years of, of uh, GMOs being grown in the uh, US, a study found that 323 million more pounds of pesticides have been applied on genetically engineered crops compared to their non-engineered 
counterparts in the U.S. This is virtually all because of an increase in the use of herbicides. Uh, all the soybeans that are engineered, it's so you can spray glyphosate, which is not a benign compound. It's actually fairly toxic. It's been linked to cancer and birth defects. And this increase, what's happening is weeds are becoming resistant to a glyphosate. We've got 10,000 acres of cotton in Georgia that are now resistant to all herbicides, including glyphosate. So guess how they're controlling them? They're having to use farm workers to go in and cut them down with, um, with um, machetes. Also, they're increasing sprays of herbicides. Glyphosate's no longer working. So now they want to get crops that are engineered with 2,4-D. For those of you that are too young to know that, that was one of the components of Agent Orange. So that's not a benign herbicide. There's also increased use of atrazine, which is an endocrine disrupting compound that's banned in a number of uh, countries. So what you can do if you want to get involved, how can you find without labeling, what can you do to find non-engineered foods? You can either uh, buy organic or you can look for the non-GMO project verified stuff. If, if you want to get involved more, there's actually, besides this march, there's actually a petition to the FDA to require labeling. We'd like to get over a million signatures on that. If you want to go on the internet, go to www.justlabelit.org. That petition, which uh, is going to be submitted to the agency, when? Was it, was it Friday? Officially Tuesday. So what you can do is get involved with this march, get involved with any of the organizations, whether it's, whether it's Greenpeace or the Center for Food Safety or the Organic Consumers Association or any of your co-ops, get involved in this issue and hopefully we can actually change the, uh, the policy here in the, uh, in the US. And I would just like to say one final thing, the world's consumers uh, um, movement. We first took a stand on this in 1987. So it's been a 25 year old struggle. We haven't won yet in the uh, US, but we have managed to uh, globally get agreement on labeling so the US can't threaten these small countries. And we've actually helped all these countries get labeling and uh, mandatory safety assessments. Now that needs to happen in the uh, US because we're basically the only developed country in the world that does not require safety assessments. So any one of you that are eating these foods, you're guinea pigs. And I don't think that's a good idea. So get on the march, get involved, because the only thing the government listens to is when people are out in the streets and making a, uh, making a ruckus. But they're frightened of us. I can tell you that folks both within the USDA and the FDA are very concerned about this whole, um, this whole um, movement because not only are there all these NGOs involved, but now we're getting more and more the organic industry, the uh, natural food industry, and more and more companies are coming on board to uh, require uh, labeling for these crops. And there's also a big push to to stop this engineered salmon from coming on the market or the engineered pigs that, that will follow it. Thanks. All right, thank you, Michael Hansen. It's here for him. You guys, we're all getting blessed right now. A lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge to eat up, some GMO-free GMO knowledge. So eat it up, remember it, spread the word. This is all real important. It affects all of us. Um, next up, a really amazing speaker, Andrew Kimbrell. He is the executive director of the Center of Food Safety. He is uh, leading the push for petitions and lawsuits to kind of protect our rights as humans here on planet Earth. And uh, he wants to tell you a little bit about the work he's doing. So give him a round of applause. He made it a long way to be here. Hey, everybody. Great to see you, everybody here. You know, sometimes we hear that uh, Monsanto can't be beat, you know, that the, the genie's out of the bottle or the genes are out of the bottle. But that just is not true. In the last 15 years, you and me and all of us, we have defeated genetically engineered tomatoes. They don't exist. Genetically engineered potatoes, they tried that. We got rid of that. Genetically engineered wheat. That was Monsanto's big, big, big try. All the wheat in the world to be genetically engineered. We defeated that. Genetically engineered rice. We defeated that. Genetically engineered biopharmaceuticals. This is when they were gonna put all those vaccines into your food. 
That was defeated. Genetically engineered alfalfa, which is going to destroy our organic dairy industry. For six years, we have stopped that, and we're right in court to stop it again right now. Genetically engineered bent grass and all your schools and golf courses, we've defeated that. So they can be beat, they have been beat, and we will win. We will win this. Now, here's their dirty little secret. You want to know the dirty little secret of the biotech industry that they never talk about? No one gets up in the morning wanting to buy a GMO food. No one, not a single human being on earth, gets up and says, boy, I can't wait to go to the supermarket and buy a GMO food. And why is that? That's because after 30 years and hundreds of billions of dollars of public and private investment, they haven't been able to come up with one thing in this food that actually helps the consumer. No better taste, no lower price, no more nutrition, nothing, zip, zero, nada. Well, wait a minute. If they haven't come up with anything that helps the consumer, what have they come up with? What, what is this technology all about? Michael Hansen has always told it like it was, right? And like it is. 85% of all the genetically engineered crops in this country and around the world are designed so you can soak them with weed killers, herbicides, toxic herbicides. And who are the big companies that do this? Come on, you know who they are. Monsanto, anybody, what, who else? DuPont, Dow Chemical, Syngenta, Bayer. What, what kind of companies are these? Chemical companies. So that's their next dirty, this is about chemicals companies selling more of their chemicals. That's all this is. It's not about feeding the world. It's not about the blind will see and the lame shall walk. It's about chemical companies selling chemicals. 153 million more pounds last year of these herbicides were poured on our crops. And as Michael was saying, we have to understand this, that as glyphosate, as Roundup, as weeds get resistant to Roundup, Dow Chemical is now coming in. Right now at the USDA, Dow Chemical has seeking approval for 2,4-D corn and soy. That is corn and soy seeds that can resist a soaking of 2,4-D, which was an element in Agent Orange. As Michael was saying, we are actually looking at Agent Orange crops coming down the line. Dave Mortensen, an excellent uh, scientist at Pennsylvania University of Penn, has said that by 2017, we'll be looking at six to 700 million more pounds of 2,4-D, Roundup, and Dicamba, which is one of the most toxic herbicides being poured on our land by Monsanto, Syngenta, DuPont, those chemical companies. Massive carcinogenic soaking. So while most of us have spent years of our lives reducing the toxic load, reducing the pesticides on our land through fighting for organic and beyond, these companies are trying to reverse all that pro progress. They're trying to reverse the organic movement and have seven, eight hundred million more pounds a year of this stuff in our food, in our bodies, in our children's bodies, in our, in our rivers, in our air, destroying our wildlife. We cannot let that happen. And I promise you, Center for Food Safety will be in the courts as we have been, and we will do everything we can to stop that. But we can't do it alone. We'll need every one of you. We need to be in the streets. We need to go to Washington. We need to tell the White House. President Obama has told us, I haven't heard from you. Which is nonsense, of course, because 400,000 of us said, don't approve the GM salmon. But he says, I haven't heard from you. So we are going to be announcing on Tuesday that we're filing a federal petition with the FDA saying you have to label these foods. And we are committed, and please get on Center for Food Safety website, Just Label It website. Through those websites, every one of you and your friends can comment directly to FDA and directly to Obama. We are looking to get one to four million people, four to one to four million people to say yes to labeling to this federal petition. You can do it right through these websites, and this is during an election year. So if Obama sees a million to four million people saying, label GMOs, he knows he can do the math. All we want's a simple label for the food that's on our table. All we want's a simple label for the food that's on our Last table. Last time loud. All we want's a simple label for the food that's on our table. All we want's a simple label for the food that's on our table. Give it up for yourselves. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, guys.